Welcome to Signal Summits. I'm Brandon Pena, editor in chief of The Signal, and joining me today on this last episode of the summer are it's four, the last one. The last one <laughs> of the summer. I know of the summer. It's just a summer. It'll be okay. That's right. But joining me today are four awesome people who are on staff with us. So who wants to go first and introduce yourselves? Obviously me. I may be the second, but I am always number one. Ooh. The name's Troylan Griffin the second. Everybody, your assistant editor. Or, um, well, for now. Uh, howdy, y'all. What's up, guys? I'm Justin Murphy. I'm the managing editor for The Signal. For now. Uh, <laughs> I'm Alyssa Shotwell. I'm the online editor for The Signal. My name is Izu Ikpiyama, and I'm a live reporter for The Signal. And a student body president. Yeah. Yeah. You better let him know. <laughs> Got a politician working for the press. You too. There you go. Oh, yeah. yeah. I Not am. yet. <laughs> Not yet. He Our is senator. the senator. Our senator. I am Should have the made that a question. Senate. Next episode, you'll be a senator officially. <laughs> Whee! But on today's episode, we're going to be talking about media coverage of minors. We're going to have a signal sound off UHCL related edition. And of course, bring back the game. No comment. So, first up, 17 year old Jagger Smith is accused of causing a car crash that resulted in the deaths of two 16 year old girls on July 25th in Atascacita, Texas. When Jagger was released from jail and appeared in court, some on social media stated that the coverage was unnecessary and in bad taste. So, what are your thoughts on minors being covered by the media? First and, of all, yeah. first of all, uh, this happened about ten minutes away from my house, so um, it's pretty close home to me. Um, but the thing that made me the most angry was the fact that people were on Twitter saying like get the cameras out of that kid's face, get the cameras out of this kid's face, like, and all this stuff, when he made a conscious decision to drink a whole bottle of alcohol, get in a car with two other people in the car, and go 70 and 40. And yeah, his imp- his judgment was impaired because he was well well over the blood alcohol level, but, like, he shouldn't have been over the blood alcohol level in the first place. He's 17 years old. It's set at zero for 17 year It should be zero, and he shouldn't, he definitely shouldn't have gotten behind the wheel of a car because he knew what he was doing putting people's lives in danger and that's all I gotta say about that uh, me personally you know I can understand the argument that you know about not putting not covering you know overloading you know minors and stuff covering them too much uh, depending on the case in this case I don't think this is an instance where people should be saying that like I can understand if you know there was an actual victim and stuff who was damaged and like maybe Wait. someone that was in the car with him and everything, maybe? There was. I thought somebody died. Yeah, no, no. I know, I know. I'm, I'm saying, oh, you're saying like someone else who survived. Yeah, who survived and stuff like that. Because obviously it's going to be overwhelming having that coverage and everything. Mm. Or just any other case where the person's a victim. I understand that maybe they don't need to have all that coverage because of how they might feel about it. But this person, like Justin said, he made a big mistake. And this is just part of the consequences that he has to deal with for what he did. I mean, you know, he might have been young, but still... Yeah, I didn't even almost like feel any like ounce of like remorse or anything in my skin for drunk drivers because you like at the end of the day when you start drinking you know that you're gonna have to go home at some point and like find your way somewhere so if your only mode of transportation is you driving and you start drinking like I don't feel sorry for you after what happens I I feel sorry for the people that drunk drivers hit because it seems like nine times out of ten it's always the drunk driver is like perfectly fine and then a family of like 12 in a minivan will die so I don't I don't feel like I don't know why they're in an uproar about him being covered in the media like you did something it's almost like if you want to act if you want to act like an adult we'll treat you like an adult yeah I have two things Let's hope. about it um, as far as the whole drunk driving thing, duh, that's bad. Don't do that. And <laughs> empathy goes away, or sympathy goes away, the more, like, technology that we have that allows us to avert that, like Uber and Lyft and just general cell phones to call friends if you don't have money. Um, but the second thing about this media coverage, I'm indifferent about it, but if there's going to be cameras um in his face and there's gonna be headlines that i think that they should be the same as if he was any other person and not Mm -hmm. a 17 year old white kid (laughs) but okay so if we were to sort of not 
focus on the details of this story just in general. He's a minor who committed a crime mm -hmm. and he is being covered by the media. Should that person still be publicized in the way that this person mm -hmm. is? Meaning like with the media coverage and the, the cameras in the faces and mm -hmm. being have your photo put on social media and on news stories, yeah. is that still something that is okay. I think so. Um, the media has a code of ethics that they genuinely follow, especially when it comes to minors. Um, and usually they won't release the name of the minor unless it's like a big trial. Um, they won't release the name for privacy issues, um, from what I understand and from what I remember. Um, but with like citizen journalism on the rise and like Twitter and Facebook, like all, all it takes is one person to like see that person, see Jagger on Twitter and be like, oh, I know him. That's this person. I think the court may have certain standards, too, until, like, what can be allowed and um, to be said outside of the courtroom. For sure. And between those two um, set of rules, uh, there's nothing wrong with if the space is going to be everywhere. He made a mistake that is was fatal to people, mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, it shouldn't go away. Plus, I mean, if at this point, if we know his name and everything like that, clearly this whole idea of, you know, his family or someone protecting his privacy, that clearly went out the window. Yeah. So, I mean, it's kind of like, you know, the press was given the key to do that coverage and everything. The more that I think about it, I'm like, who are we, like, trying to protect? Because he wasn't trying to protect himself, the people in the car, anybody else driving. So, like, why should, like, I don't get the uproar about him being like shown in the media he should be shown in the media and everybody should know that that's what he did so when you look at it like in comparison to the santa fe high school shooter school shooter the crimes are significantly separate yeah but they're both getting equal coverage mm -hmm. in that you know sort of realm of having their faces and stuff put out there what if there is a crime committed that is significantly less, but it's still a crime? Yeah. And it's a minor. Should there be a precedent set across the board mm -hmm. that they should still be publicly put out there? I don't know how to answer your question, but I will say that between a mass shooter and this person, um, the drunk driver, he, as much as people can complain, the they were treated differently in the like national news and international news and yeah well so. this case in the first place probably didn't even make it to international or maybe even national well if it was on Jaggers. twitter i feel like it, it may have gotten some it may have gotten some states. publicity but like it's more definitely like localized to houston like that's why it's such a such a big thing here yeah but i'm sure it got to other states but yeah like continue about the same place um the the scope of it is no matter what um like rules are set in place the scope of it of the crime will dictate the scope of how many people know the face and the name yeah. because um like what you said between like citizen journalism the the rules are put in place by courts and uh media companies but uh i don't know if we can like we can speculate what the coverage should be but what it's going to be is if they do something wrong their name their picture is going to get out especially if they're over like 15. Mm -hmm. Um, and if it's something to that degree, everybody's going to know who it is, the Santa Fe shooter. I agree. Any final thoughts on this topic? Don't uh, drink and drive. Yes. I second that motion. Don't drink and drive. Uber is not free. But I'd rather pay than die. Or kill someone else. There you go. Yep. Eight dollars versus you said. thousands of court court cost, car cost, and funeral cost. And apparently media coverage being a burden. <laughs> All right, guys. So as journalists, we are accustomed to being rejected when asked, asking someone to answer a question or two. However, what if the tables were turned? In this new, in this segment of No Comment, the panelists will each draw two questions from a bowl. They will then proceed to answer the question, no matter how uncomfortable or awkward it may be. If the pressure is too much to handle, the panelists can respond with no comment. However, this can only be done once. So Izu, you're first. Oh. So 
I draw a question and I have to answer one of the two. No, you draw a question and then and then you can either answer it or say no comment. Exactly. And then draw one more and I have to answer that if you say no comment. Attention! Oh my gosh! Wait, let me. I hope you get one of Lindsay's. Me too. I mean, who's Lindsay? What if this is like mine? Okay, it's not. I also think it's Lindsay's. Let me see the handwriting. <laughs> Do you feel more safe or less safe since Trump became president? Why? <laughs> he said, let me think. Who asked that? An audience member. <laughs> um, okay, am I allowed to like draw another one to like choose no, between the no, two? No, no. <sighs> um. <laughs> I'm already laughing. Our audience member is really laughing at her. I'm question. trying to think of a. <laughs> I personally, um, I definitely don't feel more safe since Trump has become president. But I can't say personally that I feel less safe because of like just the way like where I've grown up and like the experiences I've had but I do feel like it's definitely like um emboldened a a lot of more people to be more vocal about their problematic opinions quote unquote and I don't think that's good for I don't think that's good to have a president that puts things out there like that that lets people feel like they can just like spout hate speech and like everything's okay like I don't maybe think that's maybe you'll be president one day <laughs> boop there you go maybe maybe he's president alright your last one I think so like I can answer this one or you I can say, no say no comment I got you I may just answer it what's up oh my <laughs> I also may say no comment Who is the hottest person on staff besides yourself? Really, <laughs> Charlie? <laughs> no comment. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. no. That's said, good. That that's good. funny. It's, it's good that you answered this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> imagine. <laughs> All right, Dang that's it. The, Wait, you would have said me. I would have exposed myself. Sorry. Wait, can I find Lindsay's? No. Yes. I really want to know what it says. Wait, how do we know whose is whose? We just know based on the question who has what. I knew that it was Lindsay. I was like, oh, it's Lindsay's. Yeah. If it's a paragraph, it's Lindsay's. <laughs> if oh. the newsroom were on fire and you could only save one person, who would you oh. save? Oh, wow. <laughs> myself. Oh, my God. <laughs> Besides myself, I'm assuming. It's going to hurt. Oh, say this. Yikes. Be careful home. what you answer. You better plead the fifth if you want to die. That's copyright. You can't Oops. do that on the podcast. Sorry. I would save Talene. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. That's a safe answer, but that's but a good answer. But it's the answer. best answer. Safe. Answer. Safe. <laughs> but Dang. smart. What a that's morbid question. Did it say question. and why? <laughs> <laughs> you know why you look this at the easiest question. When is the last time you cried and why did you cry? Yeah. <laughs> oh god. When is the last time I cried? Um I'm so glad I didn't get that. Alright, this oh, is a good one. Yeah. I cried. <laughs> so I was at my internship this past semester and I worked I was at Texas Children's Hospital and I was reading this blog, like this blog from a patient. Um and I just like started bawling my eyes out because like you know, like these kids go through so much mm. and they're just kids and they go through all these things and it's just like it kind of puts life in perspective for you and it's like seeing it at the end uh, it was a good it was a good outcome like obviously they they've they're now in doing 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 they're doing really well now so that's just what i was like bawling i like was reading it and tearing up and i went to my supervisor's office and i was like <laughs> it was great live laugh, right. love love who's next Alyssa. I'll go next because I've never done it before. I should. Um, what was the last movie I cried to? Ooh. That's a good one. Movie? It's been a minute because I just cried like. <laughs> like on Monday to a TV show episode. That was a comedy. Um, <laughs> Me? What was but it called? It's Brooklyn Nine Nine. Yeah! Uh, <laughs> Expose yourself. Can I just talk about that then? Sure. Because I don't. It was my question. Okay, because I don't have a movie that I can think of. Um, one of the characters came out as bi in the show, uh-huh. and the captain revealed in the first episode he's an openly gay police captain, and 
she was it wasn't like where she was struggling with it and that was the sad part of it it was like that the captain told her every time somebody comes out the world becomes a better place and like Aww. he looked like he was about to cry and if I see somebody cry I'm gonna yeah. cry <laughs> and I was like oh and I had like two tears Aww. but it wasn't like a bawling moment but I was like oh my gosh I was the captain Hey, Yay, my turn. Oh, look. Grab. Ooh. Awesome. If the signal staff were caught in an al- alive like situation, plane crashes in the Andes Mountain, you have to resort to cannibalism to survival. <laughs> Who would you eat first? <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Is it the whole staff? Um, I think <laughs> are you object. guys gonna be more insulted if I don't want to eat you, or if I do want to? Please you? don't say that. Just <laughs> <laughs> all right. Answer um, the question. You okay. can't say no comment. Uh, Who would you eat first? Well, Who would you sacrifice first? Well, I'm not gonna eat well, like, you. I'm not gonna eat you. I'm not gonna eat Lindsay. I'm not gonna eat Alyssa. Should have said me first. I'm not going to. <laughs> Who would you eat? <laughs> I did this. What kind of question is this? It's better than the one you wrote. <laughs> I would have preferred to answer that one. It's Love, too, but okay. Um. Oh, I'll eat the person that I think eats the healthiest, or is the like most healthy. Catherine. <laughs> All right, Brandon, your turn. Okay. We're going to move on from that. I'm getting kind of hungry now. Wait, you don't eat meat? <laughs> <laughs> Would you eat a person? <laughs> oh, <laughs> that should have been crap. your answer. I don't want to eat anyone. Oh, crap. I didn't think of that. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so really oh, man. I you forgot about said, oh, that. You should have said I want a result to get up a little bit for that very reason. Oh, why didn't I think that? <laughs> what is the name of this? <laughs> What is the name of this segment again? No comment. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> like Charlotte exposed. Oh god, that was awesome. That needs to be good. Okay. Uh, who is most likely to win a trivia game show? General trivia. Um, Trey. Hands down, Trey. Duh. Yeah. <laughs> Trey does everything. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys for listening. And for more reporting, head to UHCLSignal.com. Like us on Facebook and send us your comments and suggestions to Signal Soundlights at UHCLSignal.com. Any closing statements, guys? Yes. I just want to say that even in these dark times, we need to know, we need to acknowledge man is good. Man is tainted. Man has faults. And if you're into certain religions, man is tainted with sin, and we are still paying for the sins of our fathers, but man is good. And as long as we have that faith in humanity, I think that we can make the world a better place. My last statement is not like that. Um, (laughs) I was just going to say go vote. Make sure you're registered to vote and go do it. Even in midterm years, even in city elections, in your student government association of (laughs) UACL elections, in which you were pre-registered by being a student. Yes. (laughs) So easy. Yeah. So, guys, have a good summer. And uh, we'll see you back here in the fall. Enjoy the orange leaves. Because huh? <laughs> the leaves turn <laughs> orange in the it's fall. Okay. <laughs> that was the most random thing. Anyways, bye guys. Bye.